What's up everybody? Well today we're going to be working on this unit again. We've done several videos at this guy's house, yeah. So before we get on with the rest of the video, I just want to clarify why I didn't move the tree from the unit. Uh, and there's two reasons why. First reason is, when I was there a couple weeks ago uh, installing a new contactor, we tried to move the tree from the unit, but what had happened was that tree used to grow straight up and down like this. Well, for whatever reason, it slowly started falling like this. So now that tree is still rooted in the ground, but it's actually growing sideways. And so we did try to move the tree before. We thought it was just dead and uh, just broke and fell or whatever. So we tried to move it and it just will not budge. And the second reason we didn't try to move the tree from the unit is because it's not my unit. I told the guy a couple weeks ago that, hey, you got to get the tree away from the unit. He agreed. He said he would. It's still there. I'm not a tree removal company. I'm not a landscaper. It's his responsibility, not mine. I was there to fix the unit. So if he decides that he wants to leave the tree there and it does damage to the unit, it's not my problem. I've told him about it and he knows about it and that's the way it is. So I just wanted to add this to the video so I wouldn't get a million questions. Why didn't you move the tree from the unit? And so I just gave you the answer. So you don't have to leave that in the comments. And there you go. That's why I didn't move the tree from the unit. Uh, so anyway, let's get back to the video. The cameraman is pointing at the, uh, at the tree uh, that has fallen. But uh, I've done several videos on this unit here. One of them was how to install a condenser fan motor. Uh, the other was a drain line. Uh, they never did put any uh, spray foam in there. But that was the one where the corn was. And then so, uh, we haven't opened it up yet, but we're gonna see if that's what it is. I've replaced several contactors here because of ants. They called said it was humming again. And I was just out here a couple weeks ago actually replacing the contactor because of ants. So it's gonna be either a bad run cap or a bad uh, contactor again due to ants. And if it's a contactor, we're gonna go ahead and put a sure switch in it and be done with it. So anyway, we're gonna open it up and uh, actually he's gonna open it up. We're gonna see what the problem is. The contactor is just buzzing and we have... So we have 243 volts. That's at the bottom of the contactor down here where the power comes in. And let's check the top. What we got? No, nothing. So the contactor is full of ants again. So the contactor is full of ants again. So what we're going to do is get the sure switch and uh because that's a sure way of uh eliminating this problem ever again uh. all right let's see how it works this first one i'd ever put in and uh i know our buddy zach had made a video on it but i just have not watched it just simply because I haven't had time to watch it and uh, and I know it's like a 41 minute video yeah look at all look at all the ants got an ant on me there so that's that I'm gonna find some places to mount the mount the screws to. Ah, there's a Give me a quarter. A quarter? Yeah. So fortunately, this unit had uh, quarter inch screws in it already. Oh, I got it right here. So we're just going to use the holes from what was here already. And So there's one there. Hand me another quarter inch screw. So 
Well, like I said, we were fortunate that, you know, this one will fit in. Look at that. So that's mounted. And then we'll go ahead and screw this back in place. Mosquitoes and ants. Our contactor wires. Our low voltage wires. Yup. All right. And then uh, let's go ahead and wire up our line voltage. I'm assuming this two wires here are them. Yes. Now that one goes there. All right, so we're just getting it wired up. Tighten up. <clears throat> we'll get our compressor wire over here. Okay, got that one there. See what happens. Hard to sit in the dark here. All right, got those. Now these two go over on the other side. So this one here. So that one's there. And then, uh, put that one there. All right. So, if you want to see more details on this, go over to, to Talon 875's video where he goes, where he has that 41 minute video. But this is just, this is the first one I ever put in. I hadn't actually watched his video. But I can just look at the terminals and say, well, this one goes here, this one goes there. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so let's go ahead and take the this cover off of this contactor and see what see what happened. I can already tell you, I see ants just falling out of there. So So, yeah, look at that. All right, so I'm gonna go tell the homeowner to turn it on, and uh, you know what I think? What? Shocking. Yeah, it's shocking. All right, so I'm gonna tell the homeowner to turn it on. Well, you don't need to. Yeah, I don't need to. All we gotta do is push the button, see, to test it. Good plan. All right, so now let's go ahead and push the button. Ooh, it's flashing. Is it flashing? Yes, it's flashing. Ooh. Wait, wait what is the flash? It means standby. Standby. Now you just press the test button for okay. one second. Hold it for one second, and then it'll come on for five seconds. Look at that. So good, so it works now. 
So it was as simple as that. And they'll be happy because they'll never have to replace another contactor because of ants. Look, he brought me out some uh, ant spray. Uh, so that's it. I'm going to go tell the homeowner he can go ahead and turn it on. My cameraman's going to put the unit back together. I'm going to show him the contactor. Thank you for watching. See ya. Bye. So I'd like to thank you for watching the video. And I thought I would add this to the end of the video because uh, when I bought that sure switch the other day, I just thought, well, I'm just going to use it on that, that particular unit. And I have one on the truck just in case I come up with a, another contactor full of ants and I'll just have a spare. Well, it turned out today I went and I found a contactor that was actually, it welded itself shut. And I guess what had happened is when it completed its call for cooling, uh, it de-energized and one of the contacts, this is a double pole contactor, one side of it had welded itself shut and it actually broke the little arm, uh, the little button, it broke and it had a little cover on it and a spring had came out of it and then so, um, so it just wouldn't work. Only one side was pulling in, while the other side wasn't. I said, well, that's another perfect opportunity for a short switch. So I used the second one I had bought in two days. So in two days, I used both of them. Uh, so I'm going to actually start stocking those on the truck. And there's an easy way to sell those things. Because they really, really are a nice product. And I know a couple years ago... Uh, there were some videos that were made on them on YouTube and and um, I was like, ah, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick with a contactor. But I tell you what, they're really, really nice. And, you know, you should keep one on your truck. And here's what I did to the, to the customer today. The first one was a no-brainer. I told them I was putting it on. It didn't matter what they said. And they agreed. Uh, but the second guy today... I took a regular contactor and I brought the sure switch. I put them together on the counter. I set them both there and I said, look, here's your choices. Which one do you want? And I told them, I said, look, I'll give you a year warranty on the regular contactor. This one comes with a five-year standard warranty. Um, and I don't sell the sure switch for a ton of money. I mean, I'm not trying to, to um, boost my 401k on one cell you know i'm not trying to fund my retirement on that one cell so i actually just sell the sure switch for fifty dollars more than i do a normal contactor and um you know i still make a little bit more money on it uh, so so i told him i said for fifty dollars more you can have one that has a five-year warranty on it and it's a much better product and you know they agreed they said that's a no-brainer. We go ahead and do it. So that's what I did. I, I put in the sure switch. So anyway, it's a great product. If you haven't used one, uh, pick you one up. You know, use it. You know, put it in your own unit and and see what you think about it. But but it really is a good product. So anyway, uh, like I said in the video, if you want to see more information about the sure switch, go over to Zach, which is Talon eight seven five. Go over and watch his video uh, about it, and I still haven't watched it, but I guess I will. So anyway, y'all have a good day, good night, good evening, whatever time you're watching this. See ya. Bye. And my cameraman, what he likes to do is he likes to text and film at the same time. See? And so I always know when he's filming or when he's texting because the camera starts shaking up and down. I don't know, how, just like that. I don't know how he films and texts at the same time, but he does. So anyway, uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to make him leave his phone in the truck when we're on these jobs. Because it's all day. Text, 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 text. Texter.